In World War II, we fought the enemy in Europe, in North Africa, Asia, and on dozens of islands in the Pacific. One of the bloodiest battles of World War II occurred on the island of Okinawa. On April the 1st, 1945, 200,000 Americans landed on this narrow strip of coral and sand. That battle was fought for 83 days, cave by cave. When it was over, the Americans had lost 7,374 young men. The enemy had lost 100,000. One month after that initial landing, the tide of battle turned against the Americans. Japanese soldiers swarmed out of their caves, desperately trying to drive the Americans back. It was a fierce battle. Almost immediately, on a high cliff, 75 American soldiers fell wounded. Others were forced to pull back. The only soldiers remaining on the top of that, of that cliff were the wounded, the Japanese, and a young Seventh-day Adventist medic. For bravery beyond the call of duty, President Harry S. Truman presented the Congressional Medal of Honor to this young soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, that medic is here tonight, and I am honored to present Desmond T. Doss. with us tonight. You're glad to be here. And Desmond Doss, you were invited to the White House for this presentation. And tonight, I'm going to take the time to read to you the citation that was given to this young private. The citation reads as follows. The President of the United States, in the name of Congress, takes pleasure in presenting the Congressional Medal of Honor to Desmond T. Doss, Private First Class, U.S. Army Medical Detachment. He was a company aid man when the 1st Battalion assaulted a jagged escarpment 400 feet high. As our troops gained the summit, a heavy concentration of artillery, mortar, and machine gun fire crashed in and into them inflicting approximately 75 casualties and driving the others back. PFC Doss refused to seek cover and remained in the fire-swept area with the many wounded. He carried them, that is these 75, one by one to the edge of that escarpment, and there he lowered them on a rope-supported litter down the face of the cliff to friendly hands. Again, on May 2, he exposed himself to heavy rifle and mortar fire in rescuing a wounded soldier who lay 200 yards forward of the American lines. Two days later, he treated four men who had been cut down while assaulting a strongly defended cave. To reach these men, he advanced through a shower of grenades to within eight yards of enemy forces. 
There he dressed their wounds, then made four separate trips under fire to evacuate them. On May 5, he braved enemy shelling and small arms fire to assist a wounded artillery officer. He applied bandages and moved his patient to a safe place. And while artillery and mortar shells fell close by, he painstakingly administered plasma. Later, on that same day, when an American was severely wounded by fire, PFC DOS crawled to him where he had fallen only 25 feet from the enemy, enemy position. There he rendered aid and carried him 100 yards to safety. He was continually exposed to enemy fire. On May 21, on a, in a night attack on high ground, while the rest of his company took cover, Doss remained on the battlefield. He fearlessly risked the chance that he would be mistaken for an infiltrating Japanese. Doss continued to give aid to the injured until he himself was seriously wounded in the legs by the explosion of a hand grenade. Rather than call another aid man, he, carried, he cared for his own injuries. It was five hours later that the, uh, that the litter bearers reached him. They were carrying him to cover. The litter bearers and DOS were caught in an enemy tank attack. PFC DOS, seeing a more critically wounded man nearby, crawled off the litter and directed the bearers to give their first attention to the other man. Awaiting the, the, litter, the litter bearer's return, he was again struck, this time suffering a compound fracture of the left arm. With magnificent fortitude, he bound a rifle stock to his shattered arm, using it as a splint. He then craw crawled 300 yards over rough terrain to an aid station. Through his outstanding bravery, and unflinching determination in the face of desperately dangerous conditions, PFC DOS saved the lives of many soldiers. His name became a symbol throughout the 77th Infantry Division for outstanding gallantry far above the call of duty. Desmond T. DOS, we salute you tonight and may God bless you and may God bless America. Now, there is a very interesting postscript to this story. On his wedding day, his wife presented him with the Bible. And that Bible was with him every day. He took that Bible into battle. After he was wounded, on that hospital ship off the coast of Okinawa, he was lying on a stretcher. And Private Doss reached up to get his Bible, and it wasn't there. He realized that he had lost his Bible somewhere on top of that escarpment. Please, he said, to those who were tending his wounds. Get word to my men. Tell them I have lost my Bible. And now, by now, that escarpment was in American hands. So the men of Company B returned to the top of that cliff. Then came a small miracle. The men of Comp Company B searched, found, and returned his Bible. Amen. Elder Shanko, I have a presentation that I would like to make to Desmond T. Doss on behalf of all the Seventh-day Adventists in the Florida Conference. On October 12, 1945, President Harry S. Truman held this Medal of Honor in his hands as he presented that medal to you. And he said, 
I would rather have this medal than to be President of the United States. Amen. With those words, he accorded to you unparalleled respect for your courage and your valor. Tonight, as I present this trophy to you, sir, I do so with great admiration for your dedication to the Seventh-day Adventist Church and for the heroism that you demonstrated on the battlefield. I am honored to stand beside you tonight and to make this presentation to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Desmond Doss, we want to hear from you. Come on up here. Well, it was an honor to serve God and country. And I'd like to make mention of something. My dad bought this picture of the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer illustrated. And I looked at this picture, how Cain had killed his brother Abel. How in the world could a brother do such a thing? I had a car against killing. I don't want to kill anything or anybody. And then, when we went to Hawaii for advanced jungle training, Elder Daddy Manson gave a chalk talk on the work of the medical soldier. Well, he started off with the Geneva Cross, the medical soldier. Then the Geneva Cross turned out to be the cross of Christ. Then here's the medical soldier taking care of the wounded, with Christ looking down. And we think of it this way. It's lawful to do good seven days a week, and it was an honor to serve God and country without having to go to dictates of my conscience. And the saying is, a person not fit to live, remember, anyone who's not fit to live is not fit to die, and we don't send that soul's instruction. God gave life, it wasn't for me to take. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for coming tonight and honoring us. It, we certainly appreciate what you have done, and you have been a fine example to every Seventh-day Adventist across the land. And may the God... Lord is coming soon. The Lord is coming Thank soon. Yes. Yes. I invite everyone to stand, please. Private Watson.